What's up YouTube? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today's video is about flipping this thousand dollar limo. Now we get stuff like this all the time. We talk about it on the channel. So I wanted to break up a little bit of the monotony of sitting talking head videos with actually showing you how we physically fix and flip cars. So we figured we picked this one because this one should be a pretty good one. We have a lot of fun adventures for it. But before we get into the video, if you could do me a huge favor and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me find more amazing people like yourselves and enjoy automotive content. Also, if you consider subscribing, I post stuff like this all the time. And without any more shameless plugging, let's get into the video. Oh, you know what? And I almost forgot. We're going to do a little side cut. We're going to announce the winner of the giveaway. Now let's talk about this 2009 Lincoln Town Car Limo. Now this thing is pretty badass. You know, we got this for a screaming deal, which I'll go into here in a second. But the reason why we got this for such a good deal is because this is powered by natural gas. There are not a lot of technicians that work on natural gas vehicles. So there's different ways where you could come up on making a sale if you have the knowledge, the accessibility, or the network to actually come up on these deals. Now this particular car was brought to us by one of our tow guys because he's got tons of vehicles in his lot. And this one right here, he took it to a few places. They weren't able to fix it and it's just sitting on his lot for the last two years so he figured he would ask us if we were interested we bought it for a thousand bucks so we don't know if it runs or drives we pretty much bought it as is sight unseen so don't think we bought a perfectly running and driving car for a thousand dollars you know so we're going to go ahead and actually go through it and test it and see what's wrong with it and do it all live on camera but before i do i figured i would kind of give you a walk around and talk about how great these vehicles are and, so, and how they play such a huge role here in las vegas now the reason why this particular limo is so special is this was actually owned by the Bellagio Hotel and Casino. This was used to uh, basically chauffeur around high-end clients. And it's kind of reminiscent of the way Vegas was back in like 2015 and below. If you were just a regular person, you got reservations, you could book a limo, they would pick you up, they would treat you like royalty. Nowadays, unfortunately, unless you got a $100,000 marker with the casino, they treat you like complete riffraff. So, you know, this is just a little slice of old Vegas, so we figured we'd bring it, go ahead and uh, bring it back to life. So the cool thing I like about this particular model is this is an actual five door, not a four door. So a lot of the five doors were used in um, funeral type of limos. You'll see them all the time where they have actually three rows of seats in the back to carry the family of the person that uh, recently departed to the actual service. But these ones in Vegas is all about the front facing seats. So, so the back seats face this way and then these seats actually face the other people in the back. So you can actually have a full on conversation or a business meeting. So that's what they provide this fifth door for. It is a much larger door than the rest of them. It's pretty much half the size of uh, the side of this actual limo and gives you much more easy accessibility to these particular customers. So I think we're actually gonna fix this and keep it in our actual fleet for a little bit to have some fun with because it's so easy to get in and out of. Okay guys, we're sitting here in the back of the limo and there's tons of space. My feet are literally all the way out and I'm still another two feet away from the seat and another probably three and a half feet away from the camera. So this is a very large extended wheelbase limo. We have comfortable seating, all kinds of stuff. Let's see, these are magazines from, oh look, Maroon 5, if that doesn't date it, I can't tell you what else will. This was used in the fall of 2005. So this vehicle was in commission from 2009 to 2015. Now the cool thing about this vehicle is most limos have two to three to 400,000 miles. This one only has 148,000 miles on the odometer. So we're hoping that with this low of miles, you know, that there's not very many mechanical problems with it. It's usually electrical because a lot of these things get put out to pasture when they can't figure out the electrical problems. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about that once we get on, uh, get outside and actually show you, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up. Pardon me while I go to my adoring fans. 
So we're sitting up front of the Lincoln Town Car Limo and it is actually pretty spacious, even with the divider behind me. There's more than enough space for my legs to actually stretch all the way out, which is pretty good. Um, very comfortable, the actual leather is not really worn. I'm gonna show you guys some B-roll of it. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood and take a look underneath there to see what we're working with. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a look and show you guys, actually let me check my volume, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and walk around and show you guys some of the stuff that's inside the motor here. If you kind of look, that is the actual natural gas actuator that regulates the pressure for how much uh, pressure actually goes into the fuel rail, some extra electrical systems. You have a secondary alternator for all the other accessories. So this is very important. Keep in mind that second alternator and I'll tell you why here in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the other cables, everything else. All right, looks good. We're gonna go ahead and pull the jumper box out and we're gonna start this thing. And I'm gonna go over the reason why some of these systems piggyback off of each other. Okay, we just put power to the battery. We're gonna let it sit for a few minutes. You never wanna start a car when it's been sitting for a while. So we're gonna turn this on, give power to the accessories and we're gonna check everything in the back just to make sure. So I'm gonna walk you back and I'm gonna explain why we're doing this. So when you work with party buses, limos, stuff like that, you have a lot of extra electrical components. What I mean by that is everything from the bar that lights up here, there's some LED lighting down there. You have this div uh, glass divider that rolls up and down. You got all this other accessory stuff, as well as we're gonna walk back up to the front here You know, we talked about it a little bit earlier was this uh, additional alternator, which puts out extra power from running all the accessories in the back to charge the battery. So this has multiple accessories on top of factory wiring harnesses. And this is one of the biggest problems with limos, party buses, and all that other stuff, is it's a lot of un, basically uh, factory type of harnesses and everything else, everything custom on top of other harnesses. So a lot of these wires, if you look, I can already tell people have messed with them. Some of these are melt, they've been cut, shrink wrapped two, three times. So it lets me know that people have been in there. So there's a reason why this thing is not running right now. And it's probably because of electrical. So we're gonna go ahead and check everything. Like I said, one more time, the accessory has been on, nothing is pretty much lightened up. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cycle the key one more time and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cycle the key on again. Turn off the radio. We're gonna check all that stuff, make sure that we don't have any issues. And zoom in here so you guys can see that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and like I said, make sure that there's no smoke. We're gonna look back here, make sure that there's nothing catching on fire. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And we got life. All right, so let's go ahead and move out here. Okay guys, if the audio gets bad, I apologize. I got the engine running. So it's got a little bit of a shake to it. It's probably because it's been sitting for a long time. And who knows if that uh, natural gas is any good. Sounds pretty decent. We already checked all the fluids and everything else off camera just to make sure that there's oil in the motor, there's water and, and coolant in the antifreeze and the radiator, and there's brake fluid, everything is working. So we're gonna go ahead. Now on some of these natural gas cars, you'll see right here, there is a main shutoff. If that is not turned, this car will not start. So that's probably what happened, is they didn't know to actually turn that on and it wasn't working. All right, we're gonna walk to the back. We're gonna see what kind of color smoke we got to see if it's white, um, if it's like a light gray, if it's got like a mist or something. Wow. So no discoloration of exhaust. Actually smells pretty decent, shockingly. Let me show you guys the natural gas cap. So when you go fill up with natural gas, that's what it looks like. Obviously we're gonna clean this because it's been sitting for months and months on end. And then if you look right here, you can see those are the gas tanks now. The old fuel cell has been removed and you can see the two natural gas cylinders. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and plug the scanner up into it. We're gonna take it through its paces and we're gonna see what's wrong with it. 
Okay guys, we found our first problem. So right now I'm flooring the accelerator and as you can see the tachometer right here is not moving at all. If you look down you can see my foot back and forth and nothing there. So we plugged in the scanner, it's reading the signal from the pedal but for some reason it's not putting the power to the throttle body. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. Okay guys, we found one major problem. If you look right here, you can see that the wires have actually been cut, spliced, put back on like two, three times. So this thing has been messed with before. People have been messing with it, not sure what exactly they've done to it, but basically the signal from the pedal is not reaching the throttle body. So what this lets me know is that somewhere between here the PCM and the inside dash harness, something is shorted out and bad. Now the downfall is, is these harnesses are no longer made. So it's very, very hard to get one. And then on top of that, this one is mated with several other systems because it's a limo. It's got natural gas parts to it. It's got all the stuff for the cabin, the AC, the lights, etc., etc. So this is not gonna be an easy fix. We're gonna basically go one wire by wire and figure out and see exactly what's wrong and what's missing on this thing. So it will take me a little bit of time. Unfortunately, won't be able to be running and driving and doing donuts uh, this particular video, but at least it gives you kind of an introduction into what kind of cars you can get and some of the fun stuff you can get into. Because like I said, flipping cars, you don't have to do regular cars. You can always do something different. So the last video we did like this was our $700 Range Rover. It was a Range Rover, like I said, we got for 700 bucks. It was a crazy build, people loved it. It winded up selling really quickly. But if you look at this thing right here, like I said, this is an actual full-size limo. So it should be a pretty interesting uh, flip and build once we're done with it. Stay tuned and I'm gonna give you guys some information about the actual vehicle again here in a second. So the good news is our $1,000 limo does run, but it does not drive as of yet. Like I said, we have no throttle acceleration. So we're going to leave that for the second video. We're going to get into it. I'm sorry this video is a little bit of short, but it's 117 degrees out here in Las Vegas, and I am literally sweating to death. So instead of grossing you guys out on camera, I'll go ahead and end it with this. Like I said, congratulations to the winner of the giveaway. Make sure you uh, email us on uh, uh, social media, however you want to do it, either lucky at Automotive uh, Life or respond back to your comment like i said you'll get your free consultation and once again if all these videos get over 2,000 likes i will give an additional one out as well but thank you guys so much for watching please smash the like button if you think you learned anything also if you consider subscribing click that and also the notification bell so this way you know when we're coming out with new content also follow us on instagram automotive.life and we'll see you next video